tonight, Prince Philip farewelled. His hopes for a no-fuss funeral certainly delivered. The short service, beginning with a national minute of silence in the UK, will tell you who from the Jigs Close family were in attendance. It's Sunday the 18th of April. You're watching 6 News also tonight. Show me your f***ing head! Stop it! Stop it! video released of yet another police killing in the US showing a 13 year old shot dead at near point blank range as protests continue just kilometres away from where the trial of Derek Chauvin is happening right now. And a number of ousted MPs in Myanmar formed their own shadow government following a deadly crackdown on protests while meanwhile a number of activists are jailed over in Hong Kong including the founder of the region's last opposition newspaper. Good evening. He wanted a no-fuss farewell and COVID it certainly delivered. A small crowd of 30 mourners gathered at St George's Chapel in Windsor this morning to pay tribute to His Royal Highness Prince Philip. The Duke's close family, his cousins and German royals were all in attendance for the 50-minute service which began with a national minute of silence in the UK. Live now to Chief Reporter Connor our fourth game. Connor, it was a scaled back ceremony but no less moving. That's right, it was a small private funeral beamed to the world from Windsor Castle into the living rooms of millions. TV screens were saturated with coverage of Philip's funeral, a royal funeral like no other. But it really was his funeral. Everything from his hearse, a custom-built Land Rover he helped design, to the music and military ceremony. For 25 years, the Duke has been involved in every detail of planning, according to the Archbishop of Canterbury, who conducted the service. We know he wanted no fuss, which meant no state funeral. While the ceremony was relatively low-key, thanks to COVID, restrictions no doubt compounded grief for those who attended and those who couldn't. There was, for starters, the difficult task of reducing the guest list from 800 down to 30. The small congregation sat socially distanced inside St George's Chapel, wearing masks. The Queen sat alone, the eyes of the world firmly fixed upon her as she stepped out in public for the first time since the death of her beloved husband. There was no eulogy, no sermon, no singing from the congregation either, and a choir consisting of just four people. It was a poignant and moving commemoration, nonetheless, of Prince Philip's life and legacy. Here's some of what happened overnight. The funeral began at 3pm local time with a nationwide minute of silence in the UK. Flags were flown at half-mast as a family, a country, paid tribute. Back home, thousands of Australians stayed up past midnight to watch the event, televised on most major networks. Rumours of a royal rift have aroused great interest in the funeral, with Prince Harry and William reunited in person for the first time since that bombshell Oprah interview. Whether or not a strategic move, during the procession, the brothers didn't walk side by side behind their grandfather's coffin, separated by cousin Peter Phillips. But it was the life of Prince Philip that ultimately took centre stage, and more than a week since his passing, tributes continue to flow, surely a testament to how much he meant to the world. 
All right, Connor and Forco live for us tonight. Thank you. Meanwhile, it's been revealed that the BBC received over 100,000 complaints from the public over its coverage of the Duke of Edinburgh's death. The media giant interrupted programming on BBC One, taking its rolling news coverage on BBC Two, while BBC Four was taken off air completely. All of its radio stations were also affected. Many on social media complained about the wall-to-wall -wall reporting, but the BBC maintains it was a significant event which generated a lot of interest both nationally and internationally. The figure makes the coverage of Prince Philip's death the most complained about piece of programming in BBC history. Back home now, the Therapeutic Goods Administration says it's likely that the death of a 48-year-old New South Wales woman is linked to the AstraZeneca vaccine. The woman, who had several underlying health issues, including diabetes, died of blood clots four days after receiving the jab. She was vaccinated just 24 hours before authorities made the Pfizer vaccine the recommended dose for those under 50. This is the country's third reported case of blood clots, our first death. So nearly 1.5 million doses have been administered across the country, but the TGA maintains that the risk of developing a clot is low, about 1 in 295. 5,000 and that you're actually at a higher risk of developing a blood clot from COVID. Authorities have reiterated the message that the benefit outweighs the risk as the global infection rate approaches its highest level so far. According to the World Health Organization, cases have nearly doubled in the past two months despite the ongoing vaccination effort. Overseas now, a graphic video has been released of yet another police shooting in the US showing 13-year-old Adam Toledo shot dead. Here it is in the body cam footage. You can see the officer chase the teen on foot down an alley for several seconds before shooting him at near point-blank range. The officer then attempts CPR, but Toledo died at the scene. During a press conference, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot declined to say if the footage showed whether the teen was holding a gun when he was shot, but she called a prosecutor's assertion at a recent hearing that Adam had a gun when he was shot correct police did say a handgun the boy had been carrying was recovered at the scene it comes in the wake of the shooting of Dante right by an officer in a Minneapolis suburb now we've seen plenty of protests come from that across Minnesota and some violence to the unrest being compared to the early days of the riots following George Floyd's death on that note jury deliberation in the trial of former officer Derek Chauvin begins Monday experts say it could take as little as one hour or several weeks to find the final verdict, we will, of course, bring you that on our social media pages and at our website, 6newsau.com. Let's get to breaking news now. The situation in Myanmar is continuing to develop as we go to air. Here's some of the latest footage from the country released onto social media as the death toll from the security crackdown on protests passes 600. A number of ousted MPs in Myanmar have now formed their own shadow government. That committee officially announcing their leaders, Aung San Suu Kyi, named state councillor, President Min Wit, and several other prominent leaders from a wide range of ethnic groups are also part of it. Those politicians chosen based on results from the 2020 election. Meanwhile, staying in Asia, tensions are high after several Hong Kong protesters were sentenced to jail for organising a march during those massive 2019 anti-government protests. That includes Jimmy La the owner of Hong Kong's last opposition newspaper who was given a sentence of just over one year behind bars. Their convictions and sentencing was the, uh, was the latest blow to the region's pro-democracy movement amid an ongoing crackdown from Beijing. FedEx is right now facing scrutiny after a mass shooting at one of its facilities. Company policy means all employees have to give up and lock away their phones on shift, but after eight people were shot dead in Indianapolis, they are now under fire on social media because that rule effectively meant none of those employees could actually call for help. That mass shooter identified as a former company employee, Brandon Scott Hole. FedEx says they are reviewing that policy. The Pentagon has confirmed that leaked photos and video of unidentified aerial phenomena taken in 2019 are indeed legitimate images of unexplained objects. The grainy footage shows triangle-shaped objects blinking and moving through the clouds, while photos of three other unidentified flying objects, one spear-shaped, one acorn-shaped, and one characterised as a metallic blimp, were taken by Navy personnel and are real. CNN reports there have been a number of reports of unauthorised and or unidentified aircraft entering various military controlled ranges and designated space in recent years and US intelligence agencies have now been directed to give all unclassified reports about UAPs to Congress later this year. 
Well, back home now, neo-Nazi group The National Socialist Network has released its full activist manual after it was leaked by a former member of the organisation that they have now named on Telegram. Leader Thomas Sewell has since published a video telling his members and the individual concerned that he should basically consider himself lucky that he was doxxed, noting that other consequences might befall people from right-wing organisations in Europe if they tried the same thing. Earlier I spoke to investigative journalist Tom Ravlick, who explained what exactly this all means. The National Socialist Network has gotten a heap of publicity over the past six months, and guess what? That's just the way they like it. A document released in the past week called The Activist Manual, uh, issued late last year by the group, actually specifies they're in the business of media baiting. What does that mean? Well, the activism they say they engage in is designed to rile ethnic groups and religious groups as well as get the attention of the media and government. It is a deliberate tactic on their part to elevate and, and increase their awareness uh, within the community. Has it worked? Well, of course it has, and it's annoyed a group called Jews Against Fascism. There was a thread during the past week on Twitter that implored people reconsider giving this group, the NSN, the far right group, any publicity at all because it accords with their ambition to get more notorious and to get better known publicly. Another thing that happened over the past week where the NSN is concerned is a submission that they tried to put to the parliamentary committee looking at extremism and radicalisation was refused. It hasn't been accepted as an official submission, but guess what? They've released it on that encrypted app, Telegram, for other people to read. That was investigative journalist Tom Ravlick speaking to me earlier. Changing pace now in surveillance video has captured the moment a driver crashed through a crossing arm and jumped over a rising drawbridge in the US. The impatient driver sped through the barrier, as you can see there, and then became airborne before landing on the other side of the drawbridge as it was opening in Daytona Beach, Florida. Two of those crossing arms were reportedly damaged in the incident and have now had to be replaced. Time for your eye on entertainment now. Fox News says they are standing by primetime host Tucker Carlson following large calls for him to resign or be sacked after defending a white supremacist theory that claims white people are being replaced by people of colour. In a letter to the Fox News CEO, the Anti-Defamation League says the rhetoric was, quote, not just a dog whistle to racists, it was a bullhorn. Carlson, who is the network's highest rating host, doubled down on the statement in an appearance on Fox News primetime. Take a look. This is one of about 10 stories that I know you've covered um, where the government shows preference to people who have shown absolute contempt for our customs, our laws, mm. our system itself, and they're being treated better than American citizens. Now, I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting ballots, mm. with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. But they become hysterical because that's that's what's happening, actually. Let's just say it. That's mm. true. Mm. If, if look, mm. if this was happening in your house, if you were in sixth grade, for mm. example, and without telling you, your kid, your parents adopted a bunch of new siblings and gave them brand new bikes and let them stay mm. up later and help them with their homework and gave them twice the allowance that they gave you. You would say to your siblings, you know, I think we're being replaced by, by kids that our parents love more. Meanwhile, Carol Baskin has opened up about what the days and weeks after the release of Tiger King were like for her. In an exclusive interview with our very own Jackson Gosnell, the CEO of Big Cat Rescue, also spoke about her thoughts about the proposal for Joe Exotic to get a pardon from former U.S. President Donald Trump. Take a look. Many people expected Joe Exotic to get a pardon. Were you surprised that he didn't, or did you never expect him to? You know, I was really worried. And at the time, a lot of people were asking me to weigh in on that, and I just refused to because I didn't want to breathe air into that. And I was afraid if I even commented on it that the, the media would just go wild with it. And, you know, sometimes things happen, and really bad things happen because people are focusing all of their attention on that. <laughs> so I did not want to be part of that. I'm sorry, I'm part of a vet group 
text messages. I keep reaching up here to try and dismiss the messages because I don't oh, know you're fine. answering them, but they're like all chatting. Um, we have a really sick cat and the vet's on his way out. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, we so were, we're talking about Joe and the pardon. So I wouldn't talk about it then, but now that President Trump is no longer in office. I was really concerned. I didn't think that anybody who, um, any president before or hopefully any president after him would ever pardon Joe if they had actually seen the transcripts from the trial and saw that the evidence was so overwhelming. The people who think that Joe was set up and all of that crap are going off of what they saw in Tiger King. They aren't going off of what actually happened at the trial. And so I felt like I was afraid that President Trump had so much going on that he might have used that as a way of deflecting attention away from himself during those last days in office. And you can see the full interview on Jackson's Instagram account. Just search Jay Gosnell News to find him. And he promised he was never going to give you up and he was never going to let you down. And now Rick Astley has opened up about his hit song. Never Gonna Give You Up was released in 1987 and spent five weeks at the top of the UK charts while also topping the charts in over 20 other countries, including Australia. But in an interview with Channel 9's Today Show, Ashley made a candid admission about life after the song topped those charts. A lot of artists who have a really huge song, um, like Never Gonna Give You Up, they start to sort of resent it. Do you ever feel like that? I kind of quit for a long time. When I was 27, I just stopped altogether everything. I, I remember it really vividly. I just had enough, really. And I think everyone, you know, anybody who was listening had had enough of me to some degree as well. Um, so probably for 15 years, I didn't sing that song or any of the, any of the old tunes. I sang them a few times at friends' weddings, but um, but I never sa I never actually sang them professionally. And so in a, in a lot of ways, I think that's done me a lot of good because... It sort of taught me to appreciate them and, and appreciate that kind of crazy sort of golden moment. That vision courtesy of Channel 9 then now taking a look at some of the other top stories we're following tonight. YouTube has suspended the account of an influential Nigerian evangelist over allegations of hate speech. BBC reports rights body Open Democracy filed a complaint against TB Joshua after reviewing at least seven videos showing him conducting prayers to quote unquote cure gay people. The preacher says he's appealing against the decision to suspend his account which had over 1.8 million subscribers. Meanwhile a new poll from PBS and NPR shows that the majority of Americans overwhelmingly oppose laws that would limit transgender rights. That includes people from all political backgrounds and all ages. About one half of 1% of adults in the US are transgender and more than half of Americans say they know someone who is transgender. It comes amid ongoing debate about gender reassignment surgery, especially with kids and transgender athletes competing in women's sports. And the US teen has revealed her huge culture shock moment since arriving in Australia. Lara Forey moved to Melbourne in 2017 and has released a viral TikTok video where she was shocked at simply being allowed outside during the day. The language used by teachers and the lack of guns, all pretty normal stuff for us Aussies, but not so much for Americans. That video racking up almost half a million views and still counting. All right, well now here's Ivan and Sarah with what's coming up tonight on WAMN News. Thanks, Leo. Coming out on WAMN News, Emotional tributes pouring in as WA remembers Ashwarya Aswath after a tragic medical bungle. A small business owner is claiming Western Power's negligence cost him over $60,000, a WAMN News exclusive. He's back. Prime Minister Scott Morrison lands in WA in his first trip to the state in 18 months. Reporter Kit Sanders' special analysis on the Prime Minister's visit, plus Dr Andrew Miller's comment. Join us tonight after 8.30 East Coast time on the WAMA News Facebook page. All right. Thanks to both Ivan and Sarah. There now to tomorrow's forecast right across the country for tomorrow now. Brisbane, partly cloudy, a top of 25. 23 in Sydney, 19 degrees in the nation's capital. 21 in Melbourne, 19 in Hobart, 21 in Adelaide, 24 in Alice Springs, 23 in Rain in Perth, and in Darwin, a warm top of 33. And finally tonight, can you guess what this animal is? And you're wrong, because it's a croissant. Yes, really. Animal welfare officers in Poland were called out to reports of a strange animal lurking in a tree with nearby residents refusing to open their window in case it went into their house. Some speculated it could have been an iguana, others said it could have been a nest, but no, it was just a croissant. 
Authorities have now been warning the public to err on the side of caution when reporting animal welfare issues. That is Six News for this Sunday evening. You can stay up to date with the latest headlines by heading to our website, sixnewsau.com, and by following us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Lit. Just search Six News AU to find us. I'm Leonardo Puglisi. Thanks for your company. Good night.